one part and the part that most people have difficulty with because they want to buy the fish the same day they buy their stuff. You can't do that because the stuff isn't ready for the fish. So you have to be very patient. You have to do this slowly because it's going to take six weeks to get it to the point where most fish are going to survive. So you want to start off with some very hardy fish, but you don't want fish you don't want, right? So pick fish that you like, and a good one to start with are the danios. And the danios are very nice because they're small, they're hardy. In fact, most laboratories use those as the specimen fish to do experiments on, and they come in striped version, different colors, and you can see they usually like to stay at the top, but they'll give you some motion in your tank. Maybe three fish, day one, 10 gallon tank. Theoretically, you want uh, uh, no more than, uh, let's say, two, two inches per gallon. So uh, that doesn't mean you can have 20 fish in a 10 gallon tank. I mean, you can have maybe five to 10 fish in a 10 gallon tank. So, Danios uh, are good to start with. Tetras, the black skirt tetras, the white tetras, also very hardy fish, community fish, good fish to start with. The prettiest fish are the neons. Maybe that's the last ones you want to add uh, towards the end of your cycling process. But as you can see, they're very calm as a rule. They look a lot like you have uh, cardinal tetras, and you have neon tetras, and you have black neon tetras. And so those would be a good fish to add, good community fish. But anything like that, those are the hardiest of fishes to start with. You can mix goldfish and tropical fish. They take different temperatures, they take different food. So most of the fish we sell are community fish. Red eye tetras, very pretty. Hatchet fish have an unusual body style. Uh, Pristillas, Serpe tetras, a lot of tetras, bottom feeders. You want at least one of those per five gallons. You see them on the bottom there. And they will eat all the stuff on the bottom. Keep keep it clean for you. Uh, cherry barbs, a, a fair community fish. Uh, they claim that all barbs like to nip fins sometimes, but I don't see that happening here. But Tiger bars, they do. They are thin nippers. And if you don't have about five to six of these guys in your tank, rather than chase each other, they'll start chasing your other fish. So they're not really a community fish unless you have enough in there. The fish on this wall are semi-aggressive, meaning that they could pick on other fish, especially smaller fish. The Paradise Karamis, the Australian Rainbows, these are ram cichlids. They are particularly aggressive sometimes to other fish, and they will upset your plants if you have live plants. We'll talk about live plants in a moment. The dwarf Karamis aren't as aggressive as the blue Karamis. These guys are semi-aggressive and they'll pick on your other fish. Uh, for algae eating purposes, there is a better fish than the Placosimus. Placos get very large. But that's traditionally what we know as the algae eater. And I have these guys in these tanks because there was a lot of algae forming on the bottom before we went into this uh, stay-at-home order and we can't come in and do as much work as we want. So we modified the filter system, actually made it better. We're going to find out during this pandemic. We've learned a lot about new technology all the way around. We can use online shopping. That we do like that. So, uh, in this tank, there are, there are some cyanenses. It's the longer fish with the stripe on, on the midsection. That's uh, the best algae eater. Better than any others. The fish they call the uh, Chinese algae eater. Not a good algae eater, and he also will nippature of the fish. Uh, angelfish. Very pretty. 
Uh, they like to have a lot of tall plants and their body is flattened, so they like to weave in and out of those plants. A lot of times they're a tease to other fish that like to nip on their long fins. Uh, this, this is another version of the uh, Australian rainbow. This is a cichlid. Aggressive. And if you have, uh, that looks to be like a peacock cichlid, and you want to have uh, all cichlid tank if you're going to have cichlids at all, but the African cichlids especially. Uh, live bearing fish. Guppies, male and female. Sword tails. Uh, platies. In this platy tank, there are some uh, uh, rainbow sharks, not real sharks, but uh, they have the look of a shark. And the mollies of different colors and styles. This is an unusual guppy here. This is an endler guppy. They're very pretty. And this guy was born in this tank. You'll see some other babies in here too. Sell live plants here, and the plants we uh, decided to uh, bring to the store are plants that don't take special lighting, they don't take special fertilization, they don't take special care. Uh, they're easy plants to keep and usually they will thrive with the uneaten food in the tank. They'll take up some ammonia. They prefer the ammonia to the nitrate, so they'll take up ammonia. And uh, what you want to do is when you plant them, you don't want to plant them above the crown. The bunch plants will come with weighted, and so the crown's right about here, but you'll see they'll root and even up the stem, but you don't want to really plant them above the crown, especially. So right where that black thing is, you stop there. Mm -hmm. The swords especially, they have a more definite crown area where all of the stems meet. So, and you'll need to prune them every once in a while, just like you do your house plants. And you don't want to plant them any further than that. This is the crown here where the roots come out. And you can trim the roots as well and get rid of the leaves occasionally. And the reason that we decided to do the plants, and we have a special running on them, live plants special, five for twenty dollars. Uh, we treat them as expendable, so the fish will nibble on them sometimes, and uh, they will help with, with your water quality, and they'll eventually die, and you just replenish them. Right. Yeah. Java fern, you don't want to plant in a substrate. What you want to do is attach it to a rock or something like that, with maybe a piece of fishing line or twine or even a rubber band, and then once the roots grow around whatever it's holding it, that's how they grow, and they'll just keep going and going and going. Mm -hmm.